In this tutorial, we are going to be discussing about memory on EVM and Solidity. I never plan to bore you with so many theoretical information, but for the sake of this topic, we can discuss memory without having to lay some theoretical background. You surely need memory when you return value from an external code, when you are setting function arguments, when you are setting function return type to definitely you are going to be making use of some memories, when you log messages, and when you are creating smart contracts, surely you are going to be using some memories. By the time you are making use of capture 256 as function, you are definitely making use of some memory. It is very important for you to know this. Memory in EVM is equivalent to the heap in the programming language like C. But memory in EVM has no garbage collector and also it has no free command. Solidity is laid out into a 2 byte sequence memory like storage, except that it is addressable by byte rather than an implement of 32. We'll look at this closely in a bit. If you are writing a program entirely in U, then memory is easy to implement because it is just as an array. In our previous tutorial, we discussed how to actually read an array directly in Yule. And reading an array in Yule, you just keep adding an index to it. This works the same way also. If you want to read a slot in memory, you had a byte 32. And if you want to write to a slot in memory also, you had an increment of byte 32. But if you have a mixture of solidity and Yule, you have to be careful because solidity expects memory to be used in a very specific manner. This is how EVM expects memory to be used. The EVM reserved from slot 0 to slot 0x3f which is the first 64 byte for scratch space and it's mainly used for hashing methods. So I will not advise you to write to these slots and if you are writing to these slots, don't expect these slots to be zeroed out. That is, don't expect these slots to be cleared. So the EVM preserved from slot 0x40 to 0x5f which is the next 32 bytes as a free memory pointer. So you are guaranteed that by the time you start writing to these slots, it won't crash into anything. And because the EVM stack doesn't garbage collect or free memory, so as the transaction progresses, the free memory pointer is not going to be decrementing. So the next 32 byte, which is from 0x60 to 0x7x, and it's called the zero slot. The zero slot is used as initial value for dynamic memory array and should never be written to. So as you are writing your structs and arrays to memory, it's going to begin at 0x80. Please note, each smart contract call has its own empty and clean zeroed memory. So in the middle of a call, your Solidity assembly code should not assume that the next memory allocation is actually zeroed out. It is also important to note that although memory is relatively cheap compared to storage, so the further you access memory on that long array, the more you will be charged gas. Previously, we made mention that storing a value in memory is just like adding an index of byte 32 to a slot. So the further you access that memory on that long array, the more you will be charged gas. And this is just to stop users from abusing memory in Ethereum's node. Let's demo this to see how mload can actually use too much of gas. So here we have this function called read high value. And what this function actually does is to load value from this memory location. If we said we should remove this pop that we added here, it's going to revert with an error that says top level expression are not supposed to return value. Use pop or assign them. So what it's expecting us to do is just to do something like this. But since we don't have need for the return value, let's go back to the pop. So what this pop actually does is to throw away the return value that is. So it's going to remove the value away from stack. So by the time we compile this and we say we should run this, when we deploy and we read high value, it's, it's going to revert with an error that said run out of gas. So if we say we should debug this transaction, we notice that the execution cost is actually more than the cost per block, which is 30 million. So there are only four instructions that are related to memory that we need to understand. The M store that takes in a value and store it inside a slot, just like S store, and the M load that retrieved by 32 from a slot, and the M store it that store one byte of a value into a slot. Then we have the M size that is used to read the largest access memory from a slot. So I believe with this theoretical background, we can actually get to work. So the first thing we are going to be doing is to be checking the difference between mstore8 and mstore. So we have a function here that checks the difference between mstore8 and mstore. So inside our assembly block, we have this mstore8 here that stores at the slot of 0, the value of 5. And we have mstore here that stores at the same slot, the value of 5. So if we say we should deploy this contract and we check the different mstore. So by the time we say we should 
debug this transaction. Remix has a handable tool that we can actually use to make this work. At the initialization of this function, all these slots are going to be zero. And we are going to be discussing why this is eight, why we have eight zero here. So, so what it what will happen is when you get to this, when you get to M store eight, the first byte is going to be changed with the value that we actually stored into the M store eight. So let's see how that works. If we move down to M store eight, which is what we have here, we want to see the value that is stored inside the M store eight, and we proceed. At the first byte of this slot, we are going to see the value that we stored inside, which is five. And after this, by the next at one byte, they are going to be zeroed. M store eight actually stored value at the first byte of a 32 byte. So by the time we say we want to proceed to M store, so when we proceed and we get to M store and we say we want to check the value that is inside M store, we notice that the first byte to the 31st byte are zeroed, and the last byte, which is the 32nd byte, are where the value that we actually stored here is being represented. So the next thing we are going to be doing is to see how struct is actually being represented in memory. But before we do that, previously we made mention that the EVM stores values at the free memory pointer. So what we are going to be doing is we are going to be reading from the free memory pointer and we initialize a struct inside the same function. Then after initializing the struct, we are now going to be loading the free memory pointer again to see the differences. So let's get started. We have a function and we call it struct memory. So we said the first thing we are going to be doing is to load free memory pointer. So we call it x14. So inside our assembly block, we are going to be initializing the x14, which is what we have here. And we end load. So we are going to be reading from the free memory pointer, which is 0x40. So after loading the free memory pointer, we are going to be emitting an event for simplicity's sake. So here we have an event that we call memory pointer. So what we are going to be doing is to emit this event, the memory pointer, and we pass in the x40 that we declared as a free memory. So the next thing we are going to be doing is to declare a struct. Here we already have a struct that accepts x and y, that accepts the value of x and y. So we are going to be initializing the struct inside this function so the next thing we have we said we'll be doing is to now load the free memory pointer again so inside our assembly block and we load the free memory pointer and we emit the event for the last time by the time we deploy and we call the function struct memory so if we should check the log of this event the first time we actually emit the event starting from 80 and the reason is because based on what we said that our actions begins at 0x18 so our log here starts at 0x80. So by the time we now initialize this struct and we now emit the event again, you notice that the free memory pointer has increased to 0xc0. So how do we know the difference and what is happening? So if we should say 0xc0 minus 0x80, it's going to give us 64. And the reason why this is 64 is because we initialize the struct value here of x and y. And our struct acts to you in 256 which is 32 byte and 32 byte. So if we should increase our struct to be of three value, and we call it Z, and we had Z here to be equals to three, by the time we redeploy and we check struct's memory, and we check the log. The free memory pointer is going to be the same thing, but the next time we are meeting the log, you notice that the free memory pointer has actually increased to 0x E0. So if we should check this, and we say 0x E0, minus 0x80 is going to be 96 and the reason is because we have a 32 bytes here and another 32 bytes and another 32 bytes so the sum of all these 32 bytes are 96 bytes so the free memory pointer is going to increment as the transaction progresses so in order for us to actually illustrate what zero slots is and also what m size is we are going to be duplicating this function and we call it struct memory v2 so what we are going to be doing here also is to emit the largest access memory which is size and inside our assembly block we initialize size to be m size then we are going to be updating this event so we have memory pointer event for v2 then we emit two values second one also will be by 32 then here also we add it as v2 and we are going to be updating the size also. So after initializing the struct again, we are going to be reading the size once more, which is the largest access memory. Then also we are going to be emitting the events for the last time. So we clear this and we redeploy. By the time we check struct memory v2 and we check the log of the events. So the first time the event emitted, we notice that the free memory pointer is 0x80 and the largest access memory is 0x60. So the reason is because 
Back to our slide, as we discussed that the zero slot, which is slot 0x60 to slot 0x7f, so the largest access memory at the point when this transaction is initialized is 0x60. So by the time we now initialize our struct and we try to read the free memory pointer, we notice that the free memory pointer has actually increased to 0xe0 and also the largest access memory also has increased to 0xe0. So at this point, DVM is not going to be leaving any slots because the largest access memory is going to be pointing to the updated free memory pointer. But at this point, you notice that there is a difference between these slots because of the zero slots. So next is for fixed length array. And for fixed length arrays, it's going to be behaving like a struct. But let's see that in action. We have a function here that we call fix array. And the first thing we are doing is to load the free memory pointer and we emit the event. So then we declare a fixed length array and we initialize the fixed length array to be 5 and 6. So by the time we now load the free memory pointer again and we emit the event, we will notice that it's going to be behaving the same way by the time we redeploy. And we read fix array, checking the log of the event. The first time the event emitted, we notice that the free memory pointer is 0x80. And the second time the event emitted, we notice that the free memory pointer is 0xc0. If we now say we should minus 0x80 from 0xc0 from what we did previously, so it's going to give us 64 bytes, which is the value that we have here, 32 bytes and another 32 bytes. <laughs> So the next thing we are going to be looking at is API encode. And API encode is going to be behaving like the array that we actually declared above here. So we have this function called API encode. And the only thing we just do is just to replace this line and we use API encode there. So the memory representation of API encode is going to be different from what we have above here for arrays and structs. And what it's going to be doing first is, so it's going to first store the length of the values that is inside the ABI encode. Let's see that in action. We notice that at first, the free memory pointer is 0x80. And the next it does is just to move to 0xe0. And if you notice, we only have two values here, which is supposed to be 0xc0. But now it's moving to 0xe0. So the first thing it has to do is, it first of all store the length of the value that is inside the ABI encode. And it stores it into a 2-byte slot, which is 0x20. And the second time, it now represents the value that is inside, which is this is a 32 byte and this is another 32 byte, making it to be 96 byte. In order for us to actually understand this better, let's check the debugger. So we proceed to towards to the end of the transaction. So the first time we saw that the memory pointer is on the 0xe0 and the next value that is being represented is 0x40, which is 232 bytes because the length of the value that are inside is 2. We can check from here 0x20, which is going to be 32 bytes. So if so we should check 0x40, it's going to give us 64. So what this actually means is we have 0x40 here, which is the two values that we have inside here, and the first value that we stored here, which is the 5 that we have here, and the second value that we stored here, which is the 6 that we have here. Then the free memory pointer is showing 0xe0. <laughs> So the next thing we are going to be doing is to act, is to proceed to ABI encode pack. And what ABI encode pack is going to be doing is ABI encode pack is, is going to check the length of the value that is inside the ABI encode pack. And the next thing it's going to be doing is pack the variable that are in sequentially. So let's see that in action as we clear this. So if we should check the log of this transaction, we notice that at first the free memory pointer is 0x80, and the next time it moves to 0x. D0. So if we should check, and the reason why this is actually showing us 0x30 is because we have one unit 256 here, which is 32 bytes, and it's represented as 0x20, and we have another unit 128 here, which is 16 bytes, and it's represented as 0x10. So the sum of this is going to give us 0x20. So what ABI encode pack is actually going to be doing is it's going to be packing any values that are arranged sequentially. So if we should say we should increase this to unit 8 and we pass in 3. Checking the log of this, you notice that it moves from the free memory pointer to 0x d1 and if we should debug this transaction, you notice that this actually increased from 0x30 that we had previously to 0x31 and the reason is because unit 8 that we have here is 1 byte. We have the sum of 1 byte plus 16 bytes plus 32 bytes is going to give us 0x 31 and the values that we actually declared within the ABI encode are available here. The 5 that we declared here and it's packed both the 6 and the 3 that we actually declared here together.
So our first take home will be how memory is used in Solidity and in U. In Solidity, memory is used anytime we declare an ABI encode and ABI encode packed. And also, memory is used anytime we declare struct and array, but you need to explicitly use the keyword memory anytime you declare a struct and array. Also, memory is used anytime you set in a function parameters and you add the keyword memory, or probably anytime you are returning a function parameter and you add the keyword memory. Because objects in memory are laid end to end according to where the free memory pointer is pointing to. So when new object is written, the free memory pointer is going to set to point ahead. On this note, arrays in memory doesn't have push because you are likely going to be clustering with other slots. And in Yule, the variable name itself is where the memory actually begins. And to assess dynamic arrays you need to add that two bytes which is 0x 2x to actually skip the length let's see this in action so here we have a function that we call arrays value and it accepts an array so the first thing we are going to be doing is to be getting the location of the array i want to get the length of the values that are inside the array i want to get the value at the index of zero which is the first value that we passed in and the value that is at the index of one so inside our assembly block the first thing we are going to be doing is to actually get the location of where the array is actually stored and we just mentioned here that the variable name itself is where memory actually begins so the variable name of the array is where the memory actually begins so in order for us to get the location we just have to call in the variable name in solidity if we say we should do something like this in solidity is equals to array it's going to give us an error because it's expecting to see something like this but in you the variable name is where the array actually begins and secondly, if we want to get the length of the value that is inside the array, we just have to load the variable name. We are going to be getting the length of values that are inside the array. And secondly, in order for us to actually get the value at an index of zero, we've mentioned that to assess a dynamic array, we have to add a 32 byte, which is 0x20, to actually skip its length. So here, when we are loading the value, we have to add zero, we add the array, which is the length, and 0x2x, which is the next 32 two byte so we, that's how we can actually get the value at the index of zero and because the 0x2x is going to be occupied now so the next value that we are going to be getting which is at the index of one we are going to be adding another 32 byte which is 0x40 so if we should have more than two lengths so what we are going to be doing is to keep on adding to the length of the array so the next one so the next one that we are now going to be adding is with the 0x60 so this is the reason why we actually said the further you are Access memory on that long array, the more you will be charged gas. Then we emit all the values that we actually pass into it. Let's see this in action. By the time we deploy and we pass in as a value, passing three and six. If we should check the log, we notice that the first value is at, is the location, which is 0x80, which is the free memory pointer, and this next is and the next is the length of the values that are inside the array then we can actually call the first value that is inside the array which is three and the second value that we pass into the array which is six 